There was another Family Guy video game? Yeah. Apparently. A while back, I went over the original Family Guy video game, but I wanted to finally revisit this Quahog family and see what their second outing in the world of video games would bring. Would it be more of the same from what we saw in the original game, or would they take the many years of Family Guy that came after and build off of where the show itself had gone? Originally, when the game was released, I didn't really give it any attention. I mean, it came out in November of 2012. You know what else came out that year? And that month specifically? Halo 4, Far Cry 3, Black Ops to and the Wii U console in general. One of those things isn't like the other, but my point is, little old me with limited money had a lot of picking and choosing to do when it came to the games I wanted to play the most, and sadly, Family Guy Back to the Multiverse didn't make the cut. So today, let's take a look into this second Family Guy game to see what it's all about. Was it any good or better than the last one, and what happened to it? Welcome back to the 25 Days of Fringe Miss, where there's going to be brand- Wait, 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 wait. Uh-uh. Ah. Double fringe miss. Aw, you only thought you were gonna get 25 videos this year? Look at you. You look silly. But I'm here to fix that because I'm gonna give you not only 25 videos, but I'm giving you 50 videos. I have two channels. That's two fringe misses. Each day there'll be a brand new video on both channels for 25 days. I haven't slept in months. Enjoy the content. Or don't. So Family Guy, back to the multiverse. It's now technically a third-person shooter adventure that directly correlates with specific episodes from the show itself, bringing in the multiverse travel stuff from the episode Road to the Multiverse, and continuing some plot points from the episode The Big Bang Theory. The gameplay is straightforward enough. You can play as either Stewie or Brian, as it's one of their classic team-up episodes now just made as a video game. And being that this is a game with two main characters to switch between, you can even play this game in co-op, which is thoughtful enough and, hey, I appreciate that. Now let's just hop into the story for what happens in the game. Brian and Stewie are just doing their thing, hanging out, big whoop, want to fight about it, when all of a sudden Bertram, Stewie's evil half-brother, returns after being killed off from the show and is there from a different universe, where he in fact didn't die, and is building an army to go through the multiverse and wants to destroy Stewie's universe as well. But Stewie is always prepared for this sort of thing, having his own means of traveling through the multiverse, bringing Brian along to help him in stopping Bertram's evil plans. What's cool is that Bertram's multiversal army is comprised of a bunch of characters from the show. The Giant Chicken, Long John Peter, Evil Stewie, and more. Having fun with the property to give you a lot of references and callbacks that deliver the fanfare you'd expect from a game like this, coming from a series like Family Guy. Throughout the game, Stewie and Brian get to enter into several different universes that you shoot and platform your way through, taking out bad guys, and by the end, Stewie and Brian make it to Town Square, discovering their town had been plunged into chaos despite being able to put a stop to Bertram's multiversal army. Then Bertram appears with a whole weaponized Tyrannosaurus, revealing to you that the whole plan for constructing an army throughout the multiverse was all just a distraction to lead them to dangerous environments, hoping that they'd not survive them, and that his assistant the whole time was going around to alternate realities recruiting multiple versions of Bertram, who now all appear beside Bertram and his newly weaponized Tyrannosaurus Rex. And yeah, there's that, and that makes enough sense here for the battle that's to come. But due to the constant traveling through universes, it's revealed that it creates tears in reality. Back at Stewie and Brian's house, as that was the location Brian, Stewie, and Bertram constantly used to travel from, allowing for Bertram to use a bomb that he crafted to cause a chain reaction that will destroy Stewie's universe, leading to a race against Stewie and Bertram before he can get to his bomb and activate it. However, this battle leads to two alternate endings for the game, and I do love it when a game gives me options in the end to determine how the story will play out, but sometimes this has led to mediocre small differences that don't really mean too much, or in the long run, are just a glorified game over screen. So let's see the difference here. Family Guy, back to the multiverse. This is somehow Meg's fault. The first being Stewie and Brian successfully taking down the Tyrannosaurus, as Bertram begs for mercy, saying that he and Stewie could rule the multiverse together. And Stewie obviously refuses this offer, with both him and Brian feeding Bertram to the Tyrannosaurus Rex, which is then shot to death after eating him. The Griffin family, all back together now, are happy to see both Stewie and Brian are safe, though Brian still worries that there's alternate reality Bertram still out there that will try and come and destroy their universe again, with Stewie breaking the fourth wall saying it would all depend on how much money the game makes. I, I think we'll just have to wait and see how much money this makes. 
Ah, we'll touch back on that in a moment, but I appreciate the joke. The other option for the end of the game is that the Tyrannosaurus manages to make it to the Griffin's house first, with Bertram declaring victory and activating the bomb as he then leaves their universe. Meg is eaten by the Tyrannosaurus, with Brian wondering what might happen next, following this with the world being blown up, leaving the player with Peter Griffin floating through space as he giggles, saying, you lose. Ah, yeah, it's not really a whole choose for yourself ending. It's just if you lose getting to the house first, the game is over. But you get a special ending cutscene that taunts you a bit for it, or you just beat the game properly. I like that they added in all that extra effort here for losing in the end, but there's not much to it other than that. I will say though that the game's levels are a fun look into moments from Family Guy with the characters being involved, and seeing these other dimensions is kind of cool, but none of the levels have that it moment that makes them feel overly special. You're just running around as either Stewie or Ryan doing the same things in each level with only minor differences here and there. On top of that, the game is extremely short, like a little over three hours short, and this was a full priced game as far as I remember because I had a friend who purchased it and hit me up the same day he bought it and said he wasted all that money for three hours of gameplay. But at least the gameplay itself feels decent to play, the shooting is fine enough, and the story is as family guy as you could make it. So for hardcore fans of the show, sure, there could be a lot more worth for you here, but it's just extremely light on the content side of things for it to be justified. As far as any other content in the game, there is a multiplayer mode where you can go against one another and have the additional characters of the rest of the Griffin household to play as as well. Aside from some extra challenge levels in the game and being able to unlock other costumes to wear or other characters like Cleveland, Mayor West, Quagmire, and Death to play as, you can also get a few upgrades for your arsenal in the game if you want. This Double Fringe Miss is brought to you by Gamer Subs. Hey. Hey, you heard of Gamer Subs? Yeah. Did you know it's less than one calorie per serving? Yeah. Did you know that it's sugar free? Yeah. Did you know if you use code Fringe, you get 10% off your order? Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. Just go to Gamer Subs, use code Fringe, get 10% off. Sick. Are you going to go to Gamer Subs and use code Fringe for 10% off? Yeah. You know it helps support the channel, right? Yeah. Do you know that you're really cute? Huh? Compared to the first Family Guy game, this one feels a lot better to play overall, and there's a little bit more to do other than just the campaign itself, but the campaign isn't anything more special than the first game's was. While there is clear love from the series put into here through the references and callbacks, the game is just too bland to be considered anything more than a quick cash grab that has the same name as something popular. Plus, Plus, it was given a really bad and busy release date, letting the game fly under the radar and move on from it. And the game didn't end up scoring too well with reviewers at the time anyway, with the repetitive generic third-person shooting and beyond that, just some really harsh words regarding fans of Family Guy, not even enjoying it thanks to feeling like it was copying stuff from the show without having much originality. Honestly, that's a bit fair for the most part, and it's sad that there isn't at least a good representation of Family Guy in video game form that can truly be more than just having references or calls backs, but Peter Griffin is in Fortnite now, so who cares, right? There were other ports of the game apparently in the works for both the Wii and the 3DS that were dropped in development in 2011, and this is known to us now thanks to Liam Robertson over on Unseen64, who found out about this and reported the most likely reasons of these versions getting cancelled, is mainly boiled down to the studio's focus on the other platform versions and getting those other versions to run well on those systems, which apparently they couldn't. Either way, Family Guy Back to the Multiverse is a pretty mediocre gaming experience experience and a lackluster Family Guy experience. And maybe one day we will get a Family Guy video game that truly brings something new and fresh to the table that makes sense for the property. And touching back to the joke with Stewie and the sales numbers, yeah. It didn't sell all that well, and I don't think rehashing any more of the Bertram v. Stewie storyline is a good thing. But what about you? What do you think? Did you enjoy this Family Guy video game? Would you like to see another one eventually? Let me know in the comments. I've been Jordan Fringe. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.